Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. My name is Amy. I'm the events manager here at Temple. Today, we are going to show you how timesheets plus cost tracker can provide timely project updates and actionable data for better project decisions. With that, let's get started. A little bit about us. Temple acquired ALM Works and Roadrun last year, and now we have three product lines. Temple Timesheets, Temple Planner, and Cost Tracker can help you better manage capacity and cost. Structure for Jira and Structure.gain allow you to visualize, track, and um, manage projects across teams. Roadmonk is a communication tool for all departments to gain high-level visibility and alignment on projects. So with this solution suite, we are able to provide our customers with even more visibility and control. So you can easily move between strategy and daily execution, make informed decisions and share progress with all stakeholders. We have an excellent light up today. Chris Chapelier, our product marketing managers, and Lisa brace Goro, our senior sales consultant, will show you how to monitor project with Tempo Timesheet and Cost Tracker. Susan and Ma Young, our product experts, are also with us today to help with answering questions. Without further ado, I am going to turn this over to Chris. Chris. Thank you, Amy. Um, so I'm Chris Chaplier. I'm the product marketing manager at Tempo uh, for the uh, Tempo product line. Um, and today's webinar will consist of two main parts. Um, one of it will be to talk about timesheets and the new functionality available to timesheets customers like yourselves. And, and the other is to showcase a very valuable solution from Tempo that monitors the financial health of your projects by tracking costs and budgets known as Cost Tracker. Um, so let's dive into the solution that we all know and love, Tempo Timesheets. Since you need to have Tempo timesheets in order to take advantage of the functionalities of Cost Tracker, I wanted to touch on some of the functionalities that you may or may not be taking advantage of, as well as reintroduce some of the new functionalities that have been added in the past few months, and as well as talk about some of the new stuff that is coming in the next few months. But before I do that, I would like to ask a question about one of Tempo's most useful features for categorizing time spent on certain projects and making the time tracking data more meaningful. I'm talking about Tempo accounts. So I'm gonna launch the first poll question. And here we go. How do you use Tempo accounts if you use them today? So it looks like a lot of people on the call are using um, Tempo accounts as well as, oh, almost about a third are, are not using it. Okay, well, this is great. Then we'll, uh, what I'm gonna talk about will be a little bit more relevant. So what are Tempo accounts? Give you a brief overview of it. Um, so what, like the slide says, they are custom fields within Tempo to help you categorize time and make it more meaningful to your organization, especially when it's your reporting. And once Tempo accounts are created, they can be added to Jira issues so that all time is accounted for, whether it be for capital expenditures, billable work for customer invoicing, or internal issues such as vacations and training, just to make sure that all time that is being logged is accounted for in one way, shape, or form. Now, Tempo accounts require some setup but it's not a very complex process. And as the slides show, if you follow these four basic steps, you can have Kempo accounts up and running your organization and up in your time tracking game in virtually no time. Um, we have all this information available in our help. Um, so I'll go over it very briefly. You can, first you need to grant permissions to make sure that those that are creating accounts and managing accounts have the proper access. Then you create the accounts themselves. Then you link those accounts to certain Jira projects. And then you can add those fields the, the tempo account field to either Jira items or work attributes. And once you create these accounts, you'll end up with this very pretty screen. I apologize, a little bit of an out, uh, eye chart here that shows all of your accounts on one screen um, along with what category they fall into. And what I mean by category is, is there could be capital expenditures, operational expenditures, uh, billable hours and so forth, along with the projects um, on the uh, right-hand side that they are associated with. Now, accounts are different than customers. Customers will be you know, an actual customer that you are doing work for, but you can create multiple accounts per customer. So you have a billable account and a non-billable account for a customer. Um, you can have those separated and so that when you're logging time for them. Now, um, two main use cases, I mentioned these before, is when you actually have your accounts created, you can add this account field to either your Jira items uh, as on the left-hand side, or your or work attribute for when you're actually logging time within Tempo. Um, so here you see that 
uh, on the account field within JIRA on the left-hand side, when you click the dropdown, um, all the accounts that are associated with the JIRA project are listed within the dropdown. You can choose which account you want to log the time for, as well as on the right-hand side, when a user of Timesheets is in the My Work screen, they can click on the Tempo account field and drop down to which, which accounts are associated with, um, with that work, with that project. Now, I know most of the people on this call said that they're using Tempo accounts, but I wanted to give an overview to lead into some of the new stuff that's come out with Tempo very recently. Uh, because Tempo accounts are a big part of an integration between Tempo timesheets and another product that's now under Tempo umbrella. Uh, Amy touched on this in the beginning. Tempo is now an amalgamation of three different companies. We have Tempo, Structure, and Roadmonk. And now we're working, uh, our developers are working on the integrations between the products and the between the product lines. And one that's really exciting uh, is one with a product called Structure. Now, Structure for Jira is a product project management tool that produces flexible hierarchies, like you see on the screen, with spreadsheet-like functionality to create big picture views of an organization's projects. There's no need for exports, and you can edit Jira fields in a given structure in real time without having to go back and forth between tabs and Jira items and so forth. Uh, but before I go any further with the integration and with Structure, I'd like to ask a second poll question. And how many of you have used Structure for Jira? Uh, and how many have you haven't heard of it and um, have you never used it, but heard of it, don't use it currently? Um, take, oh, well, over half of you have never heard of Structure. That's great. I got the treat for you. Um, we have about 24% quarter of you have heard of it, but never used it. 5% of you used it in a former company. And okay, oh, and 13% use it regularly. That's great. We love you guys. <laughs> uh, um, so now Structure allows you to sort, filter, and group among many other functions that it has, by any Jira, any field in JIRA. And one of the big reasons I reviewed Tempo accounts in the beginning of the presentation was to show timesheets and how timesheets and structure integrate currently. Uh, now accounts are created in Tempo and can be used in structure for grouping and reporting purposes to aggregate data for each account using the sum over sub items option for each column. And this integration also works for Tempo teams. So if you see on this, uh, this screen, you have the account uh, that are you know the top line and account B, account C, and closed AC. Um, those are accounts that are created within Tempo that now are able to be viewed within Structure, and you're able to view the time spent on those uh, on those accounts, on those tasks, subtasks, and stories within those accounts, and have them roll up um, to the to the top to the actually so you can see how much time is spent per account as well as per task. Now, another integration that was recently added just last month is the uh, worked logged column. Um, now, the Tempo work log column lets you view and manage Tempo timesheets work log data within a structure, and you can use uh, you can track logged and billable time alongside your project data. So you see in the red box here, you have uh, two work logged columns that have been customized to show all work and then show billable work to show the difference between um, you know all work and those that are being billed to the customers for invoicing. Uh, you can aggregate the time spent across any project hierarchy like we have on this screen. And you can, as I said before, you can create multiple columns to track specific users. So how much time was spent by a specific user, by a certain time frame, uh, billable or non-billable time like we have on the left-hand screen, and, and even more. Uh, and you'll see on the right-hand side just how customized you can. So you have a period, you have today, this week, this month, and you can even add a custom one you know, between certain dates. Um, and then for Jira users, you, as I said, you can do it by user, by team, and so forth. So great integration between the products right now. Uh, we're continuing to do more, um, but I wanted to show like what, what's available currently. Uh, so if you want to um, be able to take your reporting to this level and be able to create these hierarchies, um, if you purchase structure and you already have timesheets like you, you know you do, um, you'll be able to take advantage of this. So, but now that I've shown you how Tempo can work with structure reporting, let's show some of the enhancements we've made to our timesheets reports that are available within timesheets out of the box. Um, so when grouping by users in reports, you now have the option to view users that have zero hours logged. Uh, this was a highly requested feature amongst our customers. Now, previously, if a user hadn't logged any hours in a specific time period, it wouldn't show up in this log time report. Now, this is helpful because users that may have forgotten to log their time can be identified and reminded, and expenses can be calculated accordingly. So again, highly requested feature by our customers, and we, we heard you, and we made the change, and now the feature is available within uh, the log time report. 
And we made another enhancement to our tempo reports involving sharing them with other members of the organization. And when you click on tempo reports, many users will see that they see that those have been created and saved in the saved reports section. With the sharing functionality, users can identify reports that they have shared with others as well as those that have been shared with them, designated by the share icon in the top right-hand corner of the report. Now, these reports are great tools, but if you're like me, sometimes you want to export your data and play around with it the way that you want to. And here's another uh, feature that is coming soon to Timesheets Reporting. So we're going to add an approval status in the raw data export. And currently this says uh, that it's going to be column D. It's actually going to be column AF. I just found that out today. And, and this is going to be coming soon for, um, for the Tempo Timesheets. And um, you'll be able to export this data and see the approval status by uh, the statuses that are already within the software, which is open, waiting for approval, or already approved. Now we've covered some of the enhancements made to the reporting side of the house. I want to talk about the logging time functionality, some of the things that we've made and what's coming soon. Now, Timesheets has this really neat feature that just came out. It's actually it's, it's just coming out this Thursday. Uh, we're, so, but Timesheets has this really neat feature where suggestions are automatically entered in the My Work screen, like you see on this screen, in their activity feed based on the integrations that your organization has. And you'll see on the right-hand side in the box, um, these are some of the integrations that are available um, for Tempo Timesheets. You have your Google Calendar, uh, your JetBrains, Jira, of course, um, Tempo Planner, and Visual Studio. Now, with this new setting, admins can choose whether or not users will automatically see these suggestions with JIRA items on their My Work screens. And you'll see that there's a toggle that admins can use to either turn on or off these suggestions when it comes to JIRA, JIRA work. Um, to access this feed, default JIRA activity setting, we do require admin access. Uh, and you have to open these to have these, you have to open this to have these JIRA suggestions appear. New Timesheets users will still have the be ability to turn them on, but just it will be automatically off if you, the admin uses this, um, this setting. And while we're on the topic of the activity feed, currently the way the activity feed works is that it suggests activities based on issue keys. If you look at the this box right here, um, you see that the Google Calendar box with the meeting green energy has an issue key in the title the corresponding JIRA item on the activity card, H3E-16. Um, but what happens when there's no corresponding JIRA key? Uh, so what's being worked on is a way to make suggestions relevant based on user feedback, the machine learning functionality that we're working on. And this is not available yet. They're still working on it. It's very cutting edge. I just wanted to tease it a little bit and say this is, this is coming soon. Um, but coming soon, but I just wanted to let everyone know that really exciting things are coming to Timesheets time and other Tempo products when it comes to machine learning. Um, so stay tuned. So if you like what you see and you have a burning desire to try out new features like the ones I showcased before becoming generally available to all Tempo users, uh, you should join our Tempo lab if you haven't already. So here we give members the opportunity to play around with, ask questions and give feedback on new functionality before it's released generally. Uh, to get for information and to sign up, just go to your settings and timesheets and click on Tempo Lab, you see on that right-hand side. And now, without further ado, my esteemed colleague, Lisa Bracegirdle, will give a demo of a Tempo solution that uses timesheet data to track costs, budgets, and financial, overall financial health of JIRA projects. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, Tempo webinar. Um, it's great to be here today. My name is Lisa Bracegirdle and I'm the Senior Consultant at Tempo. My role here is to support Tempo evaluators like yourselves uh, with solutions uh, for your use cases and your company requirements. Today I'm going to show you how to master your project budgets with Tempo Cost Tracker and Tempo Timesheets and show you how when using our two solutions together it will help project managers easily monitor the financial health of their projects to ensure profitability. How it works is that Tempo Cost Tracker leverages the log time data from Tempo Timesheets so that you can quickly assess the financial health of your project that you define with a single JIRA filter. Cost Tracker is an easy to use plug and play solution 
and it translates the time logged in your project into simple costs such as labor costs, expenses, and revenue, all while tracking towards a budget. Again, I'd like to underline here that in order to use Tempo Cost Tracker, which is only available on cloud, you also need Tempo Timesheets installed. All right, so let's get going. To begin, let's uh, look at a use case I often come across where project managers need to understand how much their project is costing them at any given time. Let's start here in the JIRA view and look up um, a project I've already created called Tempo Implementation Project. Here we will show the issues that roll up to this Tempo Implementation Project and we can see that there are seven issues. I've already created my JIRA filter for this project. So after you have done so for one of your projects, um, you can now go over to Tempo um, Cost Tracker. Moving to the next tab here, I'm at the Tempo Cost Tracker solution. And as a project manager, I want to make sure that I'm on top of my project's budget for this particular uh, project. So let's create our first Cost Tracker project together where I will type in the name of my cost tracker project. I will pull up the scope that I created, my, my JIRA filter. And then right here, um, I will just simply type in a default hourly rate. But note that uh, further uh, in Tempo Cost Tracker, tracker you can configure um, your global role rates in global settings and then continue to adjust the rates uh, due to things like arrays and such which I'll show you in the project click create and configure and here on the configuration page uh, this is where I will enter my budget amount I've been given a budget of ten thousand dollars and the, the time frame of this project uh, will be the 1st of October until the end of November and click apply. So this is how we can monitor uh, the time frame. On the left here, you'll see um, the tab called rules and rates, which I'll show you quickly. Here is the reminder of our default hourly rate. I've turned on revenue tracking because I will be um, tracking uh, revenue here. And so that you know, when people are logging time against any of the issues in your JIRA filter, your JIRA users will automatically show up here. RNR, for example, um, we have labeled him as a developer role which in turn has given him the cost rate of $60 an hour. If I click on his name underneath, um, I can see the $60 an hour and the billing rate of 70. However, if for whatever reason, for this particular project, RNR should actually be getting $70 an hour cost rate, and then we will obviously need to adjust our billing rate you're able to do so right here on the Rules and Rates tab. Now let's start, um, I've set this up in the configuration, the general page. Now uh, let's start logging time against this Tempo implementation project with Tempo Timesheets so that we can later track the effort of this project. Here, uh, I'm in the JIRA issue view in the TI-3, and let's log some time towards this. Um, typically, this is in this JIRA issue view. This is where developers typically work. And as you can see down here, Tempo is embedded right in the issue view. So logging time, I click on the log time box, and I'll log five hours. 
Also, it's in, it's good to point out here um, that um, out of the box, you'll see the duration field. But if you are tracking billable hours, um, you can enable this field as well here. And what is also important to note, this billable hours field is actually the box that is tracked in Tempo Cost Tracker to track the revenue. So the reason you would need two different fields simply is because there are times whereby um, uh, a user is logging the hours they work on a, pro a particular issue and however they are logging less hours um, to be billed back. And then we'll just log some time. Let me log some time again, this time for Bob. I'll just show you I'm going to move into the month of October. And let's say Bob worked on this for six hours. Moving to another tab, now I'm in the My Work um, uh, view of Tempo Timesheets, which is another way that um, a lot of you already know you can log time. Chris mentioned a few of our features where under the Activities line, you are able to integrate your Google Calendar or Office 365 Calendar and log time quickly and efficiently that way by clicking the Log Time checkmark. The red box has now disappeared and it's now up here as a time record, adding time quickly and efficiently to our day. Uh, below again in the activities, we can see we've got some uh, JIRA uh, suggestions. So these are popping up because Taylor um, has been in these tickets today and it's reminding her of where she was during her day simply because we have JIRA checkmark to track us with our tempo automation. Uh, if I want to swiftly uh, log time for all these three cards, I can of course go up here and log the 45 minutes of activities in one click. In addition to that, you've got your issue side panel whereby you can also log time simply by dragging and dropping the card over to the right day the log time box op opens up and you can then log time. So now that I've logged time um, a bit using Tempo Timesheets in a variety of ways, let's go back to our uh, cost tracker project and see how these costs are rolling back. First, let's go over the cost tracker homepage where um, the projects tab is reminding us of all the different cost tracker projects we have created. Um, we can see the scope that we pulled in, the JIRA filter. There's a status bar, reminder of the budget, and the remaining budget as well. Down here, we're getting um, a, a little view that we are actually uh, over budget. The next column here is global settings. Just to bring back your attention before I showed you quickly how to set up role and rates. Well, on the front page of Cost Tracker, global settings allows you to, to um, uh, create your, your role rates in your company, indicate the cost rate and the billing rate. A new feature that Chris mentioned in his presentation, portfolios, is um, available uh, very shortly, uh, maybe even today, whereby um, a project manager can create a portfolio to track a number of uh, projects that are tracking towards the same goal. So, for example, here we've created a portfolio called Temple Implementation. And we're tracking two different JIRA projects in this. And you can get the performance breakdown of the budget of these two projects, the total cost, uh, how many staff is working on this project, um, and so on. The timeline view gives you a quick peek into the timeline of these two projects as well. And then the configuration button 
uh, is there should you want to rename your portfolio, uh, change the color tag, etc. Now, uh, let's go back to our Tempo implementation project that I have created. And uh, now we can see that we have a series of tabs here. The overview tab that we're in is a reminder of everything going on in your Tempo implementation project. It's reminding you of the time frame you selected, your budget, total costs so far to date, um, and revenue. Down here in the timeline, if you hover anywhere over uh, this graph, um, you can get a breakout of your labor costs, expenses on any particular day. And on the right here, this is actually can be tucked away or pop back out. This is a side panel which um, gives you quick information um, to where you are in your project. So at the top here, we can see uh, that we have a profit of $260 so far. The schedule is showing us that we are at day 32 of the 43 days of this project and that there's 11 days remaining. In our scope, our JIRA filter that we pulled in, two of the seven issues have been completed so far and uh, where we are with the cost. In addition to this, uh, added to the side panel, uh, we have our uh, Tempo accounts. If you're leveraging it with our Tempo accounts feature, um, so Tempo accounts, as you know, is a core feature that comes for free with all of our apps. It's now included in Cost Tracker. So um, when you have linked uh, a Tempo account to one of these seven issues in this Tempo implementation project, you will quickly see CapEx versus OpEx um, dollar amounts. And when you click on uh, the CapEx side, you can now get information about the exact Tempo account, um, the amount of hours that have been logged to it, and the dollar amount as well. So like I said, side panel can be moved away so you can get a better overview of this um, overview page. Moving along to the scope tab, uh, this reminds us of the filter that we pulled in. And this is where we can export um, our uh, uh, issues to CSV file or export labor costs to CSV file, meaning you are aware that with Tempo, Tempo timesheets, you can get reports from this reports module. However, with Tempo Cost Tracker, your report can be um, uh, executed here. And let's see, here is a view of um, our labor costs uh, just for your information. Down here, under this line, um, it's reminding you of the issues you pulled in from this JIRA filter, so you're able to see quickly how much each issue is costing you, the time spent, revenue, and the billable hours as well that um, is enabled in your time record when you're logging time. The team tab, as I mentioned before, when your users are logging time to your JIRA filter, um, your users are coming in automatically. So with the team view, you're able to see the total cost per JIRA user, the number of hours that they have logged to this Tempo implementation project, revenue and billable hours. The expenses tab uh, lets a project manager track any uh, expenses uh, to this project, such as travel costs, uh, license costs, food, etc., even recurring costs uh, if you need to um, track things like utilities or rent. Here we have an export to CSV button as well if you need to get that in a report, and, which is viewable. Uh, right here as an example. Uh, the, 
Uh, the approvals tab is a new feature of Cost Tracker. Um, the approvals tab can be turned on and or off, um, where uh, project time approval um, is available to the project uh, owner of this tempo project. So uh, project collaborators that you may have shared this project with do not have access to this approvals tab um, but as a project owner for this tempo implementation project i can monitor the hours logged on my project and approve them as they are submitted let me just go back to um, the previous month so you can have a look um, when you approve uh, you will receive um, email um, request to approve those project hours and approving or rejecting project hours here are only validates the time spent on projects to help project owners um, acknowledge and monitor their own team's efforts so this project approval page has no impact on your tempo timesheets approved um, or rejected hours. So um, just to let you know, it's a helpful way to monitor what uh, your users have logged on your particular project here. Now we're back to the configuration page again. Um, and uh, here is where you can turn on or off that approvals uh, tab. So now if you don't wish to leverage this feature, um, it won't be here. And there you have it. Now you've seen a full cycle of how a project manager can easily monitor the financial health of a project with Cost Tracker and Tempo Timesheets on cloud. If you'd like more information, please feel free to email us at sales at tempo.io or book a demo on the Tempo's website. Thanks for your time today. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Um, we just want to give a, uh, a recap of today's webinar. Uh, we went over the benefits and use cases for Tempo accounts in Tempo timesheets. Um, we talked about the structure for Jira integration that we have going on since now we're all be one happy family. We have come together as three different companies and you know, with the, the, the cost and product, cost, productivity and cost management solutions, our project management solutions and our road mapping and ideation uh, solutions. Uh, we talked about some reporting and logging time improvements within Tempo timesheets. And then we also talked about uh, stuff that's coming soon within uh, Tempo timesheets and, and um, Tempo Lab. We talked about Tempo Lab a little bit. And then we had a, a great demo um, of our cost tracker solution for Tempo timesheets by, by Lisa. Um, so that concludes our webinar for now. And now I'd like to turn it over for Q&A. And we seem to have a good amount of questions that have come in. I know our product experts are answering them as they come in. OK, right. thank you, Chris and Lisa, for the great presentation. OK, let's go through the questions. So Lisa, can we keep the role rates confidential so the entire team is not aware of each other's rates? Right, so with the global settings, um, your company is able to set up uh, like a baseline of user rates, um, uh, role rates rather. Uh, so you would set that up in Cost Tracker under global settings, and each project manager does see that global setting. However, when you go to the configuration page of Cost Tracker, that is where you can tweak the role rates. Um, and then because you are the uh, project manager, only you can see this unless you share um, the Cost Tracker, uh, which I just realized I didn't show you how to do. You can share the Cost Tracker with another user, but because of the sensitivity around the role rates, um, it will go through the JIRA administrator first to ensure that this is indeed, you wanna share this project with another person, uh, even if they do not have browse projects permissions uh, in JIRA, the person you're sharing with will see everything in your project. So that's something to be aware of. Thank you. All right, next one. 
uh, can we have a revenue cap? So when you have the overview of all cost tracker project, you only get information about cost tracking, but not about revenue tracking. So currently we have a new portfolio tab where you can roll up um, the revenue with our port by creating a portfolio and linking all your different cost tracker projects uh, into the portfolio tab. Can user add repetitive expense? Yes, there are recurring expenses in the expense tab. Um, when you click add an expense at the bottom of the screen, you will see uh, a recurring tab where you can leverage that functionality. Okay, so if we go over to the expenses tab, when we add an expense, so let's say rent, for example, uh, let's say it's 300 a month uh, rent. And then here you can click on recurring occurs every month on whichever day you choose and ends on, um, oh, in 2023, let's say, or after 12 times, you can choose add expense. And now you can see uh, the blue is the rent down here. Um, we've got one rent has been incurred. And then the rest that are in light gray are, are uh, to be incurred in the future. I hope that helped to answer your question. Is it possible to import multiple cost tracker projects? Uh, so import multiple cost tracker projects. Well, you can create a cost tracker project one at a time. Um, if you want to track multiple, we do have the portfolios um, tab, which is uh, new coming out today or sometime this week, where I, an idea is, let's say you have customer A, for example, um, and these are two cost tracker projects uh, that you want to monitor because it's, it's rolling up to customer A. So this is how you can um, achieve that. Okay, um, next one. Is it possible that cost trackers sync automatically instead of you know, on the bottom? Uh, is it possible that cost tracker syncs automatically instead of on the bottom? I'm not sure if I 100% uh, understand that question. Um, to create a cost tracker project, you do have to create it by giving it a name and pulling in the JIRA filter. So the JIRA filter is what is tracking your cost tracker project. And then it will create a new line item, which you can of course have in alphabetical order. Or of course use a filter if you wanna see the status and you only wanna see all the cost tracker projects that are in progress in your on your screen, um, you're able to filter by that as well. Well, I hope this answered your question, Lucas. Okay, next one, it's a long one. Is it possible to use cost tracker kind of reverse? For example, I have a project with a customer and I agree to a budget with this customer. And now I want to track how much work slash time my colleagues put into that project, aka how much we already earned with the project because the budget is our revenue. But we bill per month based on how many hours we put in. That requires the budget to go down, then the revenue up. So we don't create more total cost, but more revenue. If we don't want to define expenses, but rather just look at the time spent and money earned. Okay, so currently how we support um, uh, with Tempo Cost Tracker, a budget is supported by the dollar amount uh, that you're given. Currently, what I'm getting from that question is they would like to enter um, an, uh, a budget of hours perhaps, which we don't currently support but um, you can um, uh, enter it into our Tempo Help Center, which is a public feature place, a request place where um, customers can uh, add that feature request. So for the time being, with regards to your question, um, we support uh, with Tempo Cost Tracker by entering your budget. It can be uh, a single budget, 
or you can even set up budget milestones. Let's say, for example, you are given $10,000, but the first month is $5,000, um, the second month is another $5,000, and so on and so forth. So this you are able to do, setting up budget milestones instead of just having a single orange line um, for your budget, as I'm showing in the screen. Next one, applying rates seems to be a manual entry for each project. Is there a way to load preset rate so that we have standardized templates that can be chosen to apply based on user role? With global settings right here at the top right, um, this is a fast way for you to set up maybe a baseline of your cost rates and billing rates so that it's set and you don't have to tweak it every time. However, um, it, as I mentioned, it would be a baseline. We have a couple of workarounds where if you have a developer that is senior, you can create a role rate called developer senior and change that cost rate as well. But this is the baseline in global settings here. And then when you go uh, into your project, such as um, this Tempo implementation project, on the configuration tab at the top right here, you can then go to the roll rates and change the baseline. So your Jira users will show up here and you can just click on uh, the, their name. And then with this plus sign, this is how you are able to change um, that baseline cost rate. So there is a little bit of tweaking. And if Arnar here is a developer uh, in this project and you create another project and he's a designer, then this will change the uh, roll rate. Next one. In the graph, can you show um, all the different software developed teams work locked? like QA, front end, back end, et cetera. Uh, in the Teams tab, this is where you're able to see um, uh, the, the roll up of cost time spent. If you do want to see uh, the work logs, um, you can, uh, of course, also go to the Tempo Timesheets report to um, filter by uh, your, your Jira filter that you pulled in and get the work logs that way. This is an interesting one. Can you define overtime rate as a multiple of base rate? Uh, yeah, well, overtime, um, if, if we go to roles and rates, um, and for example, let's say uh, for the first half of the year, Arnar is working at a cost rate of $60 an hour. If he does get a raise or for whatever reason you do need to change the cost rate, it will start on the effective date that you indicate here. So I'll change the cost rate, I'll change the billing rate. And so now we are tracking as of November the 15th, um, $75 an hour instead of $60 an hour. That's I hope cool. that answered your question. Yep. All right. Next one. Can you show some cross projects report? Cross projects. So with uh, Tempo Cost Tracker, um, if we are in a project, those, if we're in a project, sorry, with the scope, um, you can export to CSV per project. I, we don't have cross-project um, reporting. We do have APIs, though, Cost Tracker APIs, if you'd like to leverage for pushing this data into um, another business solution uh, that you are currently using. But in each Cost Tracker project, you are exporting the scope to CSV or the labor costs to CSV. Next one, can Cost Tracker help track projects that have monthly recurring revenue? Um, monthly recurring, well, Cost Tracker is helping you to track the log time hours on a project uh, that is tracking towards a budget. So every time that your Jira users are logging their hours to um, any of the issues in your Jira filter, um, 
it will tick up. As we can see here in the overview um, page, the labor, this light blue purple, um, is the labor hours ticking up simply because Cost Tracker is reading the log time that your JIRA users are logging with Tempo timesheets. You talked about uh, changing the rate in the global settings. So if you change a rate in global settings, will that update all cost tracker projects? No, no. if you change the rate in global settings, um, you're changing the rate. However, if you want to change the rate, um, so you're, you're, cha you're gonna change the rate and lose um, the history if, uh, if this changes um, to 75, for example. Um, but to tweak it, you would go into um, the configuration tab, roles and rates, and that's how you can track uh, new rates coming in um, in the role and rate tab area. This is more like a baseline, the global settings area. Next one. Can you plan the cost against the required resource and show in the chart so it shows when the remaining work balance becomes under resourced uh, no we do not support that uh, function um, we are showing you the actuals going on because your your users are logging their time against one of the the, the uh, issues in your scope so you're going to get rolled up the total cost, the number of hours, and then the math behind the revenue and showing the billable hours. Because sometimes time spent on an issue is different from uh, the time spent on a, on a, to bill back, sorry. All right, I think this question is for Mayank. Is there any Temple timesheet integration with Slack coming that will use ML to suggest time to log on the timesheet? Um, there is a, a team that is working on Slack integration with timesheet. Machine learning is currently not part of that scope, but it may come in future. A machine learning team is new and they're uh, providing suggestions in within timesheet. So right now we have just released something in our Tempo Labs where some selected customers have machine learning based suggestions, but that is not uh, through Slack as of yet. It's something we can do later next year. Maybe. All right, back to you, Lisa. Can the account in the log time dialog be driven by the issue rather than making the time logger make a decision? Right, so with um, our feature called Tempo Accounts, um, there are two ways to set up Tempo Accounts. Our best practice is that someone in your organization uh, gets the uh, Tempo Account Administrator per permissions, whereby uh, let's say you have a project that has 50 different issues um, and some of them are CapEx related, You, the Tempo account administrator would click on the JIRA issue that is CapEx related and link the Tempo account to that particular issue. So issue one, for example, is linked to um, a CapEx account. And when your JIRA users log their time against issue one, um, their hours are rolling into the Tempo account tracking the CapEx. So your JIRA users, they just have to worry about logging their time. And in the background, all of the work is being done for them. They do not have to think about that, except for logging time uh, to uh, the issue they were working on. Thank you. Thank you, Chris and Lisa. Thank you.